With a name like Napoleon and a massive global makeup empire, it seems only obvious to refer to Australian makeup titan Napoleon Pertus as the Emperor. And with appearances on American television levering him into 89 million homes, he looks set to conquer the world one eyelash at a time. <laughs> to find out how it all happened, let's meet the man himself, Napoleon Pertus. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What, what happened? How did you do this? Suddenly, it's, it seems such a brief yes. amount of time, suddenly you're everywhere, as, as Corinne said, 89 yeah. million homes. How does that happen? Surely everything that can possibly be done in makeup has already been done. Um, well, no. No. To a degree. But, you know, women are women that want things customised for them. And I think I'm part of the genre. It's actually 15 years now. I'm no longer the 23 year old I was when we started. So, like, and uh, it was really about finding how to customise for women. And I couldn't have had better training ground. Australia was at really one of those countries that said we don't want to be dictated by the northern Europeans anymore, the Europeans, the northern hemisphere. We don't want to be dictated by the American trends. We actually want our own. It was the period that fashion weeks started becoming big here. It was the period we were really developing more and more of our own world in beauty and fashion. And I was part of that. In fact, the, prim the premier in, um, in New South Wales awarded me for 10 years of service to fashion week up there. And, and this morning I was with the Melbourne Spring Fashion Week people. And, you know, I was really a part of that. So when I became a part of that, it was like, I'm not going to dictate to women anymore, I'm going to help them customise. And that was a big thing for Australian women because it was like, I don't need to go to that other counter from overseas, I can go to him, he's local, he's new, I'm going to get to know him, but I can kind of do whatever I want and I can be in a candy store. And it was really part of that empowerment process that Napoleon Pertus became the household name in Australia. I mean, and that's what I take overseas. I take that philosophy and sell it. So d does that necessarily mean that what you're selling is, is an Australian uh, style of makeup? Without a doubt, I mean, this is the country that I was born in, was bred in, was like fell in love with, was educated, developed my business. Australian women are my inspiration, they're my muse. So what I do take over there is that we have a degree of freshness that is really not kind of very available everywhere. We know how to do it fresher. We know how to keep things simple. We know how to multi-skill. And women here are like as glamorous as any. Look at all the women that are top of the game in entertainment world, modeling world. I mean, we really, for a country of 20 million people, yeah. we really are at the forefront of 6 billion people. Like, yeah. it's amazing. There you have um, Alice Bordeaux, who was the winner of last year's Series Next Top Model. She was just in Paris, shot the Dolce Gabbana campaign with, you know, Mazel. It was like amazing. So, yeah. we just have amazing people. And, and, and is she wearing your makeup? She is. is she... In fact, I did that, I did that makeup for um, that shoot. And she's, uh, this is called Take on the Urban Jungle Patrol. Yeah. And she's like top of the world, taking it on. Lipstick is back. I really wanted to wear the red lipstick. She's a Melbourne girl, actually. Yeah. And she's like amazing, natural, free, you know, with her beauty. And that's what they loved about her. She, that beautiful English rose look that we yeah. had developed down here. Yeah, yeah. How do you... Look, the American market is just enormous. Yeah. I mean, you think about all the Australian actors who've gone over there and just disappear into a sea of a besquillion other people. There must be besquillion makeup artists over there trying to sell their wares as well. How did you get... No in the first place. I know that you sent a little goodie bag to Paris Hilton when she was in jail and you got some publicity out of that. Is that how you went about people finding out who you were over there by doing little stunts and things like that? That was like about a year and a half later. Right. I basically landed in New York with all the strength of the Australian business and started to network the fashion world and the beauty director world. I really wanted the beauty directors of those major magazines to know who Napoleon Pertus was. As someone who's from Texas said to me, she, she said, honey, it's so big it'll make you slap your mama. And you know what? I certainly did all that. And I certainly worked it. Until I finally ended up doing the makeup for the editor of LUSA, Roberta Myers. I went into this huge boardroom. She was, I was waiting for her. She entered in. It was typically a scene like from the devil was proud of it. She's so much nicer. And I did her makeup. But Elle was my biggest supporter over there. Right. And I started working professionally. Once, the industry always knew I was an international makeup artist that had a lot of accreditation. It was just a matter of cracking it and telling them to yeah. talk about it. Yes. Once that happened, I didn't need to be everything to 300 million Americans. I just worked on pockets at a time. So yes, yeah, some of it was kind of PR things, but a lot of it was just me and my team just going out there, doing the events and working it. Like, there's nothing like hard work. 
work. There's no, it's like dieting, you know, I always say, can you give me a pill? No, it's close your mouth, zip it up, don't eat, and kind of do exercising. It's amazing how it works. <laughs> the same with like work. You just got to work hard and consistent and it pays off. You, you, you have a, a, an advertising background, don't you? as well. Yeah, Marketing. I mean, following finishing university in Australia, I worked in the advertising world um, with um, newspapers and magazines. Right. Yeah. So, so therefore, how important is uh is marketing, is a marketing campaign, and how important is celebrity endorsement? Um, well, the first thing, celebrity endorsement is not important at all. For 14 years of the brand, I had never um, had a celebrity endorse. I mean, we worked and I did makeup with celebrities, but wasn't the only celebrity and only because she was that beautiful and she was that natural and she was Australian was Melissa George, and that was only for a part collection you know it wasn't for the whole so um, and that was amazing because she, she's just truly spectacular um, and there she is there while we're kind of that was my the launch of my Beverly Hills store in Century City right um, and uh, but uh, marketing I call is communication marketing is just basic communication you just need people that watch that like you know and it's about the smaller communication the bigger communication so it's about being part of events it's about you know sending out your press release it's about making sure your team is out there representing it's about me representing myself like one of the reasons why I got the primetime Emmys gig last year was because as big as long com is they weren't seeing the governors at the Academy you know in LA all the time I was in there all the time like a pest it was almost like <laughs> he's here again you know, he's yeah, like really? a pest. Give him the Emmys. So, so the Emmys, so you are, uh, let's get this right, you're the official sponsor of the Emmys? What does that no, mean? I'm the makeup partner for the Primetime Emmys through the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. So what does that mean? That means I do everything to do with the Primetime Emmys. So I you do make the red carpet, up. behind the scenes, before they go on, creative arts Emmys, performer nominee receptions, producer nominee receptions. The whole month in September is like huge and it's a national awareness to the point where I'm really proud to be saying that this September, and I just got the last bit of news to just before I came on here, was uh, my, brand, my brand would be in two and a half thousand stores. I've just signed the contract Gee. in wow. the States. And that's a big thing. They'll carry the Primetime Emmys pack. And I love, I love the fact that Americans love Australians so much. I have to say that. Mm. You know, we should be really proud of the relationship we've worked with them. Does it, is it daunting, though? Because makeup is such a, it's a multi-billion dollar business. And there are those established uh, uh, operators uh, who have been doing it for years. The more your profile rises, do they start to put pressure on you? I mean, look, with my TV show and things like that are happening, there was a, there's a lot of pressure. But it's not pressure that I didn't know was going to happen, and it's not pressure that I didn't expect. So for a lot of people to sit there and say, oh, my God, it's a lot of pressure. It is, but I want it. I, I worked for it. I'm ambitious. I took my whole Australian experience and made it develop further. So I kind of really love it. Mm. Um, the, the point um, about uh, multi-billion dollars, I don't need billions of dollars. You can live very comfortably. It's, you, know, you don't have to be just the bees. You can be the M's and you can still live very comfortably and it works really well and I can be niche and still have a very comfortable life and talk to lots of people. Yeah. I'd like so, to be a millionaire with a niche. That'd be good. Don't you love that? A bit of a niche? Yeah. 